radiation from this stellar beast breaks down the organic molecules needed for life. The pulsar has these very strong magnetic fields that are being spun around as the star is rotating quickly, and it's picking up any material, electrons, protons, and speeding them up and slinging them out at, at high speed. So it's like a, a solar wind with a vengeance. I can't imagine that there would be much of an opportunity for even simple life, microbial life, to emerge and to flourish on a planet around a pulsar largely because if you were in the pulse, you'd be severely energized, and if you were not in the pulse, you would be completely devoid of energy. The discovery of pulsar planets shows how new worlds can form in the wake of a star's destruction. No matter where a planet arises, the process of its birth is fraught with danger. Sometimes, the violence is so great the end of the world comes before the beginning. 2007. Astronomers using the giant Gemini North telescope make a strange discovery in the Pleiades cluster some 400 light years from Earth. A star known only by its catalog number, HD 23514, is surrounded by a giant donut-shaped cloud of dust and gas. The star in the middle of the donut shape is about 100 million years old. A cosmic toddler in astronomical terms. Our sun is 45 times older. The conditions are perfect for planets to form. But spectral analysis finds something strange. The dust is utterly pulverized. Typically, a newborn star is surrounded by fledgling planets. Planets form around the young star in a protoplanetary disk of gas and dust. And then these planets go on their merry way orbiting the star not realizing that they're in an orbit that's too close to another planet. Millions of years ago, two primordial planets orbiting HD 23514 are spinning toward doom. As the two worlds close in, tidal forces torque each planet from spheres to egg shapes. Nothing remains. The two worlds are annihilated, creating the dust and debris seen around star HD 23514. Four billion years ago, a similar apocalypse came to Earth. A Mars-sized planet forms in roughly the same orbit as the newborn Earth. Like the planets at HD 23514, Earth and this Mars-sized body are barreling toward each other. If you happen to be unlucky enough to be standing on a growing planet when it was in the process of still becoming the Earth, uh, you might wake up one morning and notice that the sky was getting darker and darker as a Mars-sized body was coming at you within a period of, of less than an hour. And when it hits, the shock wave is felt all over the planet, scouring the surface of the Earth. The collision obliterates one side of the planet. Molten rock sprays out into space. The entire globe is peppered by meteors and noxious vapor. It would actually make hell look like a Bahamas vacation. The debris field from the collision coalesces and forms our moon. It is a new beginning for our planet. 
Collisions are part of the birth process for planetary systems. Building up a terrestrial planet is probably all about colliding pieces of rock together. And all across the galaxy, colliding pieces of rock are forming terrestrial worlds that defy the imagination. There is a new planet out there, a planet we were not aware of existing before. It is not just one planet. It is a new type of planet, Earth on steroids. I like to call them super-Earths. They are just like the Earth, except bigger, up to about 10 times the mass of the Earth. One family that the super-Earths resemble, just like our own Earth, continents, oceans. Some of them may be very dry, like Mars. And then another family that we call water worlds or ocean planets that are completely covered with water. Welcome to Gliese 581c. This planet was found by Michel Mayor, and it orbits with two other planets around a very small star. It's only 20 light years away in the constellation of Libra and is one of the smallest terrestrial planets found beyond our solar system. That doesn't mean Gliese 581c is small. It's still a super-Earth with five times the mass of our home planet but it's the possibility of liquid water that excites scientists. An ocean planet feels like being in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, with no land in sight, just water, puffy white clouds and blue sky above you. The winds on the ocean world are going to be similar to that of the Earth, so it will be a very good place to sail. The weather's absolutely perfect. Every day, you get a clear blue sky, and the sun just stays in the same place. Now, how's that for weather prediction? No land anywhere. Even miles beneath the surface. This water layer would extend very far down, at least a quarter of the way down in the planet. But as we dive deeper into the sea, the pressure builds. At 35,000 feet below the surface, we pass the point where the deepest oceans on Earth bottom out. We pass the 100,000 foot mark. The pressure is so great Water itself begins to take on surprising new forms. At a depth of 10 times the greatest ocean depth on Earth, we reach the bottom. When you have a large amount of water, then at the bottom of an ocean, you will form very high pressure in excess of a million atmospheres. And that pressure will compress the liquid water, that is the ocean, into a state which we call Ice 7. No, it's not like ice in your refrigerator. The molecules of water that are in the ice in your refrigerator are kind of all jumbled up. But if you form ice under very high pressure, then the water molecules can become ordered, they can become aligned. I can show you a crystal that is a very good analog to I-7. 